Now, tonight I want to bring to a conclusion uh, a message series, and, and I had actually planned to be finished with this long before now, uh, but we've just had so much going on. I've been talking to you about how to have more in 24. God wants you to have more in 24. And this has been a while back, but the first message was hitting the bullseye for God. And you know how the arrow is in the back, in the quiver, and you've got to be in the quiver, you've got to be in the church, you've got to be connected, you've got to be willing to be stretched, and you've got to be focused because if you, whatever you aim for is usually what you're going to get. And so we're aiming for the bullseye in 2024. By the way, Easter is a good aim to have to bring people in. And then I talked to you about more of God, not just more from God. I would like for you to say that back with me. More of God, not just more from God. And we talked about the distinction, what that is, the direction, um, and the satisfaction. And then um, I talked to you about Esau, uh, what God saw in Esau. We used a negative uh, example, how that Esau told his brother Jacob, I have enough. And we don't need to have the Esau spirit. We need to say to God, Lord, Thank you for what you've done, but I don't have enough. I need more of your touch, more of your grace, more answered to prayer. I want more of God. Amen? And then last Sunday night, I hit on something very, very important, total forgiveness. Because you're not going to get more of God as long as you hold unforgiveness, no matter what somebody has done uh, to you or to your family. So uh, go back and listen to those messages because I do believe that God wants to give us more in 24. And I want to close the series tonight by going into a cornfield. Now this is not an episode of Hee Haw. This is straight out of the book of Matthew. Would you stand with me tonight in Matthew chapter 12 verses 1 through 8. More of God just help yourself. Amen. Matthew chapter 12, verses 1 and 8. If you're glad to be here tonight, say amen. Sister Jane, you did a wonderful job in that song, and it goes right along with the message tonight. Amen. At that time, Jesus went on, Matthew chapter 12, verse 1. At that time, Jesus went on the Sabbath day uh, through the corn, and, uh, and his disciples were hungry and began to pluck the ears of the corn and to eat. Verse 2, but when the Pharisees saw it, they said unto him, Behold, thy disciples do that which is not lawful to do upon the Sabbath day. But he said unto them, Have you not read, <laughs> I like that, uh, have you not read what David did when he was hungry? And they that were with him, how that he entered into the house of God, and he ate the showbread, which was not lawful for them to eat, neither for them which were with him, but only for the priest. Or have you not read in the law, had it on the Sabbath days, the priests in the temple profane the Sabbath? In a sense, they break the Sabbath, but they're blameless. But I say to you that in this place, somebody say right here, amen. He is here, hallelujah. In this place is one greater than the temple. But if you had known what this means, I will have mercy and not sacrifice, you would have not condemned the guiltless. For the Son of Man, read that out loud with me, verse 8. For the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath day. God, give us more in 24. I pray your anointing upon your servant as I preach the word of God tonight. God, give us a hunger for more of you. Lord, make us hungry for more of God, more of your presence, and we'll give you the praise. And everybody said amen. And as you're being seated, tell somebody you're getting hungry. Amen. Getting hungry. Now, many times when we have guests that are coming, say, to spend a night at our house, boy, we do get everything ready. I mean, everything's vacuumed and poly uh, dusted, polished too. We get everything just right, just ready, just perfect. And one thing we'll do is we'll make sure that there's plenty. If we know they're going to stay a night or two, uh, we'll make sure there's plenty in the refrigerator, more than what we normally have in the refrigerator. And uh, or my wife may even cook a meal and so that there will be uh, plenty of food for the folks we're expecting. And what we really want to do is to make sure that when they come, that they have a good experience. When we invite guests to stay with us, and used to when I pastored in other cities, and 
Uh, the last church I pastored was uh, almost three hours away, and so we had to have family to stay. They didn't just come for a visit, and so we made sure that, uh, that, that we wanted them to have a good experience. We wanted them to enjoy themselves. We wanted them to feel comfortable, and, uh, and what we would do is uh, uh, when, when they were coming for a few days, uh, we would say something like this. We would say, look, if you want anything to drink or if you want anything to eat, don't ask us for it. Just go on and get all you want. Go to the refrigerator anytime. Get as much as you desire and just help yourself. And I like it when I go to somebody's house and I stay. Maybe I've preached a revival and the pastor has invited me over and he'll look at me and say, Brother Ricky, uh, uh, just help yourself. Don't wait for us to, to refill your tea. Don't wait because they know I love a lot of tea. Amen. And uh, don't wait for us to get you a second piece. You go on uh, and you help your self. Well, my friend, I want you to know it's the same way with God. I believe that God, as Jane sung tonight, has great things in store for our lives. I believe God has great things in store for your situation. Don't you give up on the brink of a miracle. God has great plans for this church. And what I want to encourage you to do is just simply this. As if you were staying with me for a few days, I just want you to just help yourself. Amen. I want you just to know that the the, the uh, table is spread. Uh, I want you to know that the blessings are coming down. Uh, I want you to know that God's promises uh, are from everlasting to everlasting. Uh, and you don't, don't go hungry. Don't go away disappointed. Uh, listen, it's time to get more of God. Uh, and I want you to just help yourself to his blessings. Uh, help yourself to his uh, anointing. Uh, help yourself to the prayers uh, that he is going to answer. Uh, don't be ashamed. Uh, don't be afraid. Uh, don't be distracted. Don't don't be deterred. Don't be dissuaded. Don't let the devil whisper in your ear some poverty mentality or that it's for somebody else. No, it's for you and it's for me. The master calleth, come and dine. He who fed the multitudes and turned the water in the wine. He's a, there's a table being spread where the saints of God are fed. To the hungry he calleth now. Praise God, come and dine. Somebody just help yourself and give God some praise here tonight. I want more of God in 2024. Somebody say amen tonight. I want to talk to you about number one, the provision. Somebody say the provision. Because in our text tonight, the disciples were traveling. And in those days, as you can imagine, in these days, traveling is quite easy as compared to those days. They didn't have all the, you know, they're building a convenience store every time you turn around here in Wilson. And, uh, man, I was read in the paper the Wawa store is coming. Man, I was excited about that and until, until I saw a Wawa store in another city, and I thought, that's not a big whoop in the Wawa. Amen. <laughs> Just another store. But they didn't have uh, convenience uh, marts. Uh, uh, they didn't have if something went wrong uh, or if they were delayed. Uh, you see, many times they would run out of food before they got to where their destination. Uh, and that would put them in a bad fix. Uh, you see, uh, they when they were traveling long distances, they would prepare food. But sometimes they just didn't know. Maybe they got delayed. Uh, and sometimes they had more journey then they had food. And so the Old Testament law said that when that happened, if you were walking by a field, you could just go into the field and get some of the crops that had been left over or even the crops that were still there. You could just go and get what you needed. The Old Testament law provided for that. And that's what happened in our text tonight. For some reason, the disciples found themselves where they didn't have anything to eat. And in that time of need, uh, they just happened uh, to stumble uh, upon that field uh, and said, well, look there, here is some corn. Uh, and I want you to think about that tonight. I can just imagine as they're traveling uh, and Peter is saying to John, you sure you got enough food? Yeah, we got enough food. And, uh, and they travel another day. Well, P uh, well, Thomas, what we got? Well, we got just a few a few more. I thought you said we had enough. If you watch the, the uh, Chosen, you'll see, you'll understand what I'm talking about, this dialogue here. And then finally... 
they run out of food. Well, who was supposed to bring the food? Didn't you realize that we were supposed to have enough, that we were going to be traveling? And they begin to, to probably to get a little angry with each other. Sometimes church members get on each other's nerves. Uh, not at Westmoreland. It's probably down at Peace Church, I'm sure. But please understand uh, that they probably were in a little tizzy. Uh, we're out of food. We're, we're 12 hungry men. Uh, and guess what? Somebody says, wait a minute, wait a minute. Keep walking. Keep walking. What is that I see over there? Oh, there's a cornfield. Oh, just listen. God knew that what you were going to need just in time. Amen. Uh, God had already provided. Praise God. Uh, he had already provided. He knew that they would need. Uh, they were going to be hungry. And he knew that there was going to be about that time. Uh, they were going to orchestrate. God, or listen. God orchestrates our steps. Uh, the steps of a good man uh, are ordered by the Lord. Uh, and he delights in his way. And there you go. There's corn, and God provided. My friend, God has provided all that we need. Before Adam and Eve needed clothes, God had provided uh, skins for them. Before Hagar and her son were about to die, oh, she looks, and there's a well of water. In the gospel, when they were needing to pay their taxes, uh, Jesus said, just go fishing. Uh, I like that. Uh, I tell you, they went fishing, uh, and they pulled out a fish that had all the tax money that they needed. Uh, just what you need when you need it. My God will provide. Somebody put your hand together and praise him for the provision. Matthew 6 and 8 says and your father knoweth that things that you have need of before you ask him and what God has provided <laughs> I got a word from the Lord for you tonight just help yourself to it can you imagine they got to that cornfield and they were so you know how you are when you're hungry <laughs> I don't know about you, but I get a little irritated. <laughs> I get a little short, t short talking to my wife. And, uh, and I'm like, I don't have something I'm ready to eat. And uh, we're waiting and delay when I, I'm so hungry and I walk in the door and they said it'll be a 45 minute wait. Are you kidding me? Absolutely not. I just go over to uh, Wayback Burger. Praise God, they'll have me a big burger out there in about five to 10 minutes. Amen. There's a provision. Let me tell you, friend, you need to help yourself. Praise God. You don't need to be hungry. You don't need to go without prayer. You don't need to be doubting and wondering, am I going to make it? No, just help yourself to his promises. Uh, they're there for you. Uh, claim them uh, and just say, God, I want more in 24. Somebody give him praise uh, in his house for those provisions tonight. <laughs> Somebody say, just help yourself. Amen. Just help yourself now. It's there. <laughs> it's there. That's the provision. Now let's look number two at the condition because there's something important here. It says in Matthew chapter 12 verses 1, uh, it says that his disciples were hungry. Somebody say hungry. The key word is hungry. Now if they weren't hungry, they wouldn't have minded that field. If they weren't hungry, they just went on by. And I, I got plenty. My, my, my stomach is full. In other words, um, if if they weren't hungry, uh, they 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 went out because they were hungry. If they weren't hungry, they wouldn't have made an effort to receive the provisions. And I want to ask you tonight: Are you hungry? I didn't talk. I'm not talking about for two biscuits and grilled chicken and, and a large tea over at that place on I-95. I'm not talking about that. I said, are you hungry tonight? I'm not talking about going to Wayback Burgers after church. I'm telling you, are you hungry tonight? Are you hungry tonight? Listen, that's the reason we don't see God's anointing. That's the reason we power. And I marvel back when I think of my great grandmother. I remember when she walked on one of those uh, one of those walkers and and uh, and she was a old lady decrepit and 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 I remember getting a call and she said Ricky God has healed me and I, and I went to see her and she was sitting in her her chair and and uh, I'd always seen granny sitting in her chair and then something happened and she had to get up and go somewhere and answer the door check the phone and I was sitting in the other chair and I just didn't pay any attention to it and all of a sudden granny got up 
walked across that room and did whatever. And I'm telling you, my mouth dropped. I was 10, 10 years old. And I'm, I, I'll, I'll marvel at the Oral Roberts tent meeting over at Rocky Mount where he had a big tent meeting and Shirley Jones, the evangelist, had, was, had all those problems with her bone and her back and she got healed and became a great evangelist. I believe I had her here when I pastored here the first time. And, uh, but but when, she, when you called Sister Jones up to preach uh, and, she, and you'd get ready to say, Sister Jones is coming, she'd get up and run to the pulpit. And every time the pastor gives me the nod, I feel that little Sister Jones running to the pulpit amen because that's what my God can do <laughs> that's what he did when I read of William Seymour uh, the African-American uh, uh, in Azusa Street when I, I'm the archives director of our conference and I'll sit at my desk it's a fun it's the funnest job I've ever had in my life uh, I'm telling you uh, uh, they give me just a little bit of money for it and I'm telling you uh, it is the e it is so uh, amazing God the easiest of money I've ever made because I I'll sit there and I'll read about what that happened uh, let me tell you friend uh, God is not finished uh, he is still working. Uh, let us realize uh, the problem is we're not hungry enough. Uh, if we're hungry, God will meet the need. Uh, and if we've run out of food, uh, look at there. There's a cornfield. Uh, just get in there uh, and all of that corn. And you pull out some here and pull out some there. Have some popcorn. Amen. Uh, and let's have revival. Amen. Somebody put your hand together and let's give the Lord praise here tonight. Matthew chapter 5 and verse 6. I'm not ashamed of my Pentecostal heritage. I love, I love Pentecost. And for a, a world where people are hooked on drugs at 10 years of age, pornography at your fingertips and everything, the, the filth of this world, the, the, the pull and the demonic forces and the media, the news media, and all that we're against uh, for desperate hours. We need a church for, with desperate measures. Uh, amen. Desperate times call for desperate people. Uh, I said, are you hungry? Uh, are you too many churches are just uh, we're just sitting on the premises. We're just sitting on the premises. They're not inviting people to Easter. They're just going to have to come and whoever's here, whatever. They're just going, uh, we're just sitting on the premises. Friend, God hadn't called us to sit on the premises. He's called us to stand on the promises. Amen. Uh, and one of the promises is that you can be filled uh, and this church can be filled. Uh, there's an opportunity out there. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst. Uh, what's that last line? Uh, For they shall be filled. Uh, well, why don't you say amen here tonight? I pray that every church board member is hungry. I pray that our Sunday school teachers are hungry. I pray that every member is hungry. Every father is hungry. Every mother is hungry. And I'll tell you, I'm still hungry for more of the Lord. I'm still hungry for more of His touch. And I'll tell you, the problem with a lot of people is they're not, they're one of the reasons they're not hungry for God is because they filled up things. Do you know there's such a thing called junk food? Do I need to have an altar call right now? Funyuns, Doritos, junk food, cookies, all of that, it fills you up. But it does, it's not very healthy for you. And it causes things to happen. Amen. Hallelujah. I, 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 I might need to go to order myself. <laughs> Every time I go to Wayback Burger, I say, I'm going to get the burger but no fries. But I always get the fries. Because I'm hungry. <laughs> they got awesome fries. Amen. Awesome fries. But let me tell you, if I fill up with french fries i'm not going to eat lettuce and cucumbers and carrots because i'm full of the french fries and i want to tell you something that people today they they've got the i'm just i marvel at the, what's available with that remote control paramount plus peacock hbo max showtime five dollars a month netflix one series after another. And I'll sit there, I'll, I'll, I'll say, that series looks interesting. And one or two episodes into that series, there's nudity, 
that I wasn't expecting nor desired. There's language that is just unbelievable. There's ungodliness. I remember uh, my friends at work were going to were talked about Game of Thrones, the Game of Thrones or HBO, and and how wonderful it was, and it was based on the movie, uh, based on the books. And uh, I thought, well, let me watch, <laughs> let me watch Game of Thrones, so I can talk with those guys and say, yeah, I watched it too. I like good, good, clean, solid intellectual entertainment. <laughs> well, I have to say, Game of Thrones certainly was well, well presented, and and uh, certainly had a wonderful storyline. But the mess that was in that series, I had to stop watching it. I could not continue to watch it. And there was another show called. Um, uh, Yellowstone. I've heard people, I've seen people on Facebook that go to church saying, I love to watch, uh, uh, what's his name? Kevin Costner in Yellowstone. Now, I'm going to pause right here because some of you are looking at me, but you know what I'm doing? I'm, I'm doing what's called holiness preaching. Hallelujah. Brother, the holiness preachers, when I grew up, they didn't even let, want you to watch TV. They didn't want you to have a TV. Amen. <laughs> you didn't even, they said it was a devil with a tail plugged in the wall. Amen. I'm, I'm I'm telling you, brother, they didn't even, they, they said, they didn't say you could watch good movies. They said, don't watch any movies. And I don't know if they hadn't had, you know, back then they had the power of God and now we don't. So I'm like, well, maybe we're the ones missing it. Amen. And I'm not talking about being radical, but I'm here to tell you, if we fill up with what the world thinks, if we're all the time hearing the latest podcast, if we're all the time watching a Netflix series, those people don't have God on their mind. Those people, I'm not saying it's not wrong to watch something that's wholesome and entertaining and re refreshing. It's, it's God gave talent and those things are godly and can be used and doesn't have to be a Bible story every time, but I'm just here to tell you, are you hungry tonight? If you're not hungry, maybe it's because you're eating too many fries at Wayback Burger when you need to be eating a real deal. Amen. Uh, nothing against Wayback Burger, praise God. But I need to get full of God, uh, which means I need to empty myself of these, the husk uh, of this world. Uh, I don't need to feed on the things of this world. Uh, I need heavenly manna. I don't need earthly stuff uh, that will not fill uh, and will not last and will lead me down the wrong way. Can you say amen? Are you hungry? That's the provision. That's the condition. You got to be hungry. But guess what? Finally, there's the opposition. Because when you get hungry, don't think that when you go in that cornfield, whoa, you are filling up, you're, you're pushing your basket. You're, what do you call them things? The, the, the shopping cart. You push in your shopping cart down at Harris Teeter, and you just, man, God has provided. You're just filling up that grocery cart, and guess what? There's some people that don't like it. Can I tell you there's going to be opposition? When you get hungry for God, there's going to be some opposition. It's going to come from the devil, but the devil uses people. <laughs> that crazy air is going to fly off the handle, I promise you. You get hungry for God, your children who have been good, all of a sudden the devil's going to agitate them and they're going to bring chaos. Come on now. It's just not going to happen because look at this. Uh, when, when they began to, they were generally hungry. And by the way, it was on the Sabbath day. Somebody say the Sabbath day. They went in there and they got, they were hungry and they got that corn and they began to load up. And guess what? The Pharisees and the Sadducees got mad at them. And said, you guys are breaking the Sabbath because you're not supposed to work on the Sabbath day. And there Jesus is standing right there listening. And I'm so glad Jesus just answered that crazy stuff. He said, let me tell you something right here. It's the Sabbath day, but these guys are hungry. And haven't you ever read? <laughs> Wouldn't be wonderful if people read the word <laughs> and quit quoting Dr. Phil and quit quoting some televangelist uh, and quit quoting somebody that's hurt. We need to have you not read. Ask your neighbor, have you not read? <laughs> and he pointed out to them, first of all, the Bible says that the priest actually broke the Sabbath because they had to work to get their, their meal. Amen. <laughs> and, and, and by the way, we are what? According to Revelation, we are what? 
a kingdom. Uh, we are priests and kings unto God. So Jesus was already telling them, hey, these are priests, amen. Uh, and they can, they're not breaking the Sabbath. They're doing exactly what they're supposed to do on the Sabbath. Hallelujah. It's the Lord's day, and we need to be in the Spirit, uh, and we need to be hungry, and we need to come to church, uh, and we need to worship and praise Him. We need more of God in 24. Can you say amen? And then he said, what about David? David was hungry, and his men were hungry. And let me tell you something. David knew one place that had fresh bread all the time. Don't you, don't you know that I know and we know what restaurants are open and when? I know when certain restaurants close. In fact, we're about to say amen right now. <laughs> oh, 9 o'clock's coming quick. <laughs> David knew one place that had plenty of bread. Woo, this is getting good to me. <laughs> he knew one place. He knew the temple had fresh, hot, every day. Don't you hate a cold biscuit? Come on, be honest with me now. As much as I love that place that I love, they plop down biscuits and I'm about ready to get into it and it is so hard I can't even get my knife in it it is disappointing but buddy when they come out there and they bring me some bread and it's soft and warm and David knew that in the temple he's like guys I don't see no McDonald's out here <laughs> guys I don't know where <laughs> Burger King is but I know one place that's got some hot Fresh bread, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Where is it, David? Where is it, David? It's in the house of God. Friend, I'm here to tell you, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. I was glad, so glad. I know the bread is burning hot. Now, some churches got some cold bread, but this church got some hot steaming fresh from the oven bread at Westmoreland Pentecostal Holiness Church. Brother, the bread is soft and fresh here he knew where to go and he went to the house of God and Jesus pointed out to those critics and said he was hungry and he broke the law in a sense but God is more interested in healing and helping people than keeping some rule and then he said third thing by the way fellas you're talking about the Sabbath Looky here, I am the Lord of the Sabbath. And if I gave them permission to do it, then shut your forky tongue mouth and quit criticizing people. And I'm here to, I'm going to close here, and I'm going to close on a good note, but I'm here to tell you, you've got a lot of people in church that are like little snakes with their forked tongues, and they want to criticize people that praise God, and they want to criticize that something ain't right here, something ain't right there. they got that spirit of, of, of everything's wrong, and, and uh, they're the type of people that, that <laughs> I had a lady one time right before I was getting ready to preach. She just, <laughs> like a snake, just told me all kinds of bad stuff. I looked at her and said, well, glory to God. <laughs> I got up there, and I got some hot bread, and, buddy, I preached that devil on out of there. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah, friend. Uh, I'm here to tell you, don't you have a criticizing spirit? Uh, and listen, there are genuine concerns, and there are genuine ways to present your concerns. Can I get an amen out there? And it doesn't mean that you've got to uh, say, well, I, I like every single little bitty thing because we're all different. We've all got different backgrounds. all got different cultures. And we all got different body temperatures, amen. Some are hot, some are cold. There's a good, positive way to, to, to join and let your needs be known. But I'm here to tell you that spirit of criticism, uh, it, it, it'll do more damage to you. Uh, and why be a critic? Uh, why don't you just jump on in there? Why don't you? Those Pharisees, buddy, they, let them sit out there and get hungry. But there's some people that want more of God. There's a church that wants the Holy Ghost. Uh, there's people that want Pentecost. Uh, there's some hungry people in this house tonight. God's raised up a generation. Uh, desperate times call for desperate measures uh, and desperate people. Uh, I want more of God. Would you stand to your feet tonight uh, and just feast off some hot bread tonight? Uh, oh Lord, uh, we just come tonight. Uh, we know that we know <coughs> that you've provided. 
And we're not going to leave hungry tonight. Oh, God. Hallelujah. We are kings and priests tonight. Somebody just help yourself to healing tonight. We've already prayed, but come on and help yourself. If you need to be sanctified, come on and help yourself. God will break the power of pornography. He'll break the power of cigarettes. He'll break the power. Just help yourself. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You say, well, somebody's criticizing me. Somebody's uh, running me in the mud. That's all right. If they run you in the mud, make a mud pie. Put a little sugar on it. Amen. God will see you through. Amen. Man. You know what God did with mud? He made people with it, praise God. He, you can do something with negativity. Uh, you can turn it on the devil. Uh, oh, somebody give him praise. Uh, just help yourself. Well, are you hungry? Would you just step out of your seat? The table is spread. Bring all your needs to the altar. And if you don't have anything to pray for tonight, there is one thing you can pray for, that on Easter Sunday, between our two services, our anointed choir, the word that's preached, you can pray this, God, we're hungry for souls. Have you got a lost child? Are you hungry to see them saved and delivered? Come on down and just help yourself tonight. Are you dealing with depression? Somebody told me the other day that they were dealing with depression. Just help yourself. The joy of the Lord is your strength. The joy of the Lord is my 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 strength. Come on and help yourself tonight. You do it by praising him. You do it by calling upon his name. Come and dine. Oh, there's a field of corn. Oh, the corn grains are, are full and ripe. God's got blessings for you. Help yourself to peace that passes all understanding. Help yourself to, to the promise of glory and eternity. If you're not saved, help yourself tonight. He has stocked the refrigerator. Don't you fill up with junk food this week. Fill up with heaven's bread. Uh, trust him. Don't, don't listen to Fox News and CNN all day. Uh, don't fill up with the bad news of the world. Uh, just help yourself to the good news. Uh, hallelujah that we win. Uh, we are more than conquerors. Uh, Romans chapter 8. Uh, all things work together for good uh, to them that love God. Uh, I am more than a conqueror. Lord, I want everybody just to lift your hand and just help yourself. Just help yourself tonight. Hallelujah. Oh, God, we thank you that there's some hungry people. If you've not been filled with the Spirit, just help yourself tonight. Oh, we bless you, Jesus. We praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We bless your name, Lord. Hallelujah. We're hungry tonight, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, we're hungry for you tonight, Jesus. We praise you, Jesus. Here's my cup, Lord. I lift it up, Lord. Oh, bread of heaven, I praise you tonight, God. I'm hungry, Lord God. I'm hungry tonight. I'm just going to help myself tonight. I'm just going to be free tonight. Hallelujah, and I exalt Thee. Come on, exalt Him. I exalt Thee. I exalt Thee. 